This video will explain how to perform a direct start of an electric motor and how to make the connections in the motor terminal box, either delta or star. Here are shown the basic elements necessary to make a direct start of a motor, that is, to start and stop. All these elements are mounted on a DIN rail board, except for the push buttons. Well, here I am going to show how to make the connection for both the control circuit and the power circuit. Before continuing I want to clarify the following. In a real physical implementation, the buttons and indicators are not mounted on the board, but rather, they are placed on the front cover of the box or cabinet, as shown in this photograph. For this case, I have arranged it this way so that in the explanation of the wiring you understand where and how these elements are connected. In addition, if necessary, the cables should go in channels so that everything is more tidy and gives a much better aesthetic appearance. Three-phase power conductors or cables are designated as line 1, line 2, and line 3. In addition to neutral and ground. From where, for the command or control circuit, it must be connected from a line in the neutral. While, for the power circuit, all three lines or phases are generally used. By the way, for the color of the cables, I have taken into account the IEC standard. Depending on the country you are viewing this video from, there are different voltage levels. For example, 127 volts corresponds to single phase and 220 volts to three phase. In other countries, 220 volts correspond to single phase and 380 volts to three phase. Of these, and for this example, the power supply for the command or control circuit is single phase and for the power circuit it is three phase. I hear. It is necessary to take into account how much is the supply of the contactor coil, which is specified in the same device. Now let's see the elements that make up the control circuit. Q1 is a bipolar thermomagnetic switch responsible for putting the entire control part into service, in addition to providing protection to the conductive cables of the control circuit. That too is a normally open button for start. S1 is a normally closed stop button. KM1 corresponds to the supply that must be made in the contactor coil, as well as for its self-holding. F1 corresponds to the thermal relay, which fulfills the function of protecting the motor against a possible overload or overheating in the motor winding. If you want to go deeper into the operation of each of these components, in the description of this video and up here I will leave the links to the previous videos where all this is explained in more detail. Here we are only going to focus on the wiring and connection part. For the wiring, we are going to be guided by the following scheme. The phase cable is taken to terminal 95 of the thermal relay contact, and from terminal 96 it is taken and connected to both buttons and then to terminal A1 of the contactor coil. From between the push buttons, it is connected and connected to contact 13 of the contactor, and from contact 14, it is connected and connected to A1. Finally, from terminal A2 of the contactor, it is connected and taken to the supply neutral. So that would be all the wiring that would be done for the control part. Obviously this is the most basic, since pilot indicators or other things could still be added, but that will be seen later. Wiring for the power circuit is relatively easier, at least for this board. Since, from the main power, it takes the three line cables and connects to the inputs of the main contacts of the contactor. From the output of the thermal relay, it is taken to the terminal blocks or terminals, where, from that point, the load is going to be connected, which in this case is the motor. A protection wire should also be considered, which is the ground wire. Here is the view from another perspective in more detail, so that you do not have problems when doing the physical implementation. The electric motor to be considered is an asynchronous or induction motor, squirrel cage type with six terminals. Then, from the board terminal blocks, the power cables are connected and taken to the three-phase motor. Every electric motor has a terminal box, where the terminals of the coils that compose it are located to be able to make the different connections that are required. On the left, the terminal box is shown, where it is indicated how the coils inside the electric motor are connected. 
Let us remember that the winding of an electric motor is done with a type of copper wire that has a special enamel coating that electrically insulates the wires from each other. The distribution of terminals and nomenclature, for this case, has been carried out taking into account the IEC standard. Where, U1 and U2 are the terminals of the first coil. V1 and V2 are the terminals of the second coil. And, W1 and W2 correspond to the terminals of the third coil. The terminals may also be designated with numbers, as shown. This corresponds to the NEMA standard. The order and configuration of these terminals are arranged in this way to facilitate the types of delta or star connection that can be made for this motor. In a six-terminal induction electric motor, two types of connections can be made. It can be a triangle, or as it can also be a star. Where, for the triangle connection it is fulfilled. The line voltage is equal to the phase voltage. And the line current is equal to the square root of 3, multiplied by the phase current. For the star connection it is fulfilled. The line voltage is equal to the square root of 3 multiplied by the phase voltage. While the line current is equal to the phase current. As I already said, the designation of the terminals of each coil can be according to the IEC standard, as is the case here. Or you can also use numbers according to the NEMA standard. On the data plate of the three-phase motor, two types of voltages are specified. Of which, a triangle connection must be made, if you have the lowest voltage, in this case it indicates 230 volts. And a star connection must be made if there is a higher voltage, in this case it indicates that it is 400 volts. In this plate, it gives us more data, which will be seen in more detail in another video. I will leave the links here above and in the description. Now, I am going to make the delta and star connections in the motor terminal box, as shown in these diagrams. We join terminals U1 and W2 using a metal plate. In the same way we join V1 and U2. And finally W1 and V2. The external line cables reach the three-phase motor box to connect to the corresponding terminals. In such a way that L1 is connected to terminal U1, L2 is connected to terminal V1, and L3 to terminal W1. To secure these cables, it is recommended to use suitable ferrules or terminals for greater adhesion and thus ensure that the motor does not work on two lines or phases. It is also possible to consider a protection cable, which is the ground cable that must be connected where indicated or on the metal frame of the motor. Then, in this way, the connection would be made in the terminal box of the six-terminal three-phase motor. The left side shows the configuration that the coils should have in the event that, in the terminal box, the coil terminals are disconnected or in a different order than the one shown. Now, for the star connection, which is used when you have the higher voltage indicated on the motor data plate. We join the terminals W2, U2, and V2, using two metal plates. The external line cables reach the three-phase motor box to connect to the corresponding terminals. Like the previous connection, L1 remains connected to terminal U1, L2 remains connected to terminal V1, and L3 to terminal W1. To secure these cables, we use ferrules or terminals. The ground cable is always connected to the metal frame of the motor to protect against possible electrical shocks or to de-energize the motor when it has been turned off. Then, in this way, the star connection would be made in the terminal box of the six-terminal three-phase motor. On the left side is shown the configuration that the coils should be. Some of you are wondering what nominal current values the elements that make up the electric motor board should have. And well, that will depend on the power of the motor, for this example, we have the data plate of the motor. Assuming we have a 400 volt supply at 50 Gertz. So on the nameplate it tells us that, at that voltage value, the motor must be connected in star, and that the nominal line current is approximately 2.67 amps. So, with these data, we can already dimension the values of the elements of the electrical panel. The thermal relay is the element in charge of protecting the motor, therefore, its current must be adjusted to the value of the rated current of the motor. For this case at 2.67 amps, 
or at its closest value of 2.75 amps. While the current value supported by the other elements can be higher and there would be no problems. Take into account that the current value of the power cables must withstand more current than the three-pole thermomagnetic switch. For this motor, we can work with a cable with a minimum section of 2.5 square millimeters and an ITM of 16 amps. For the control circuit, you can safely use 16 gauge wire and a 10 amp bipolar ITM. The explanation of each of these elements had already been made in previous videos, which I will leave here at the end so that you can review it.